Welcome to the Lead Stronger Longer podcast that empowers you to purposefully lead your life personally and professionally. In today's episode, I have a remarkable guest whose passion for history and innovation has taken him on an extraordinary journey. Jeremy Swick is a dynamic historian. He's a curator, archivist, podcast host, business owner, and he's a bit of a maverick in the field. He was born in Guatemala City, but he's finding his roots in the heart of Wisconsin. Jeremy's story is one of relentless pursuit and dedication. He has a knack for unraveling the tales of the past. Jeremy has become a prominent figure in historical circles. He's known affectionately as at the average historian across social platforms, but Jeremy is anything but average beyond his love for rugby and a penchant for engaging discussions on sports history. He has carved a niche for himself through his professional endeavors from his tenure at a historic photography museum to his impactful roles at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the College Football Hall of Fame, Jeremy's contributions have left an indelible mark on the realm of history preservation. However, it was his keen observation of a glaring gap in the museum landscape that sparked his entrepreneurial spirit. Fueled by the desire to democratize social media, for cultural institutions, Jeremy founded Swick Media. Rejecting the conventional route of outsourcing to behemoth agencies, he pioneered a more efficient and cost-effective approach, revolutionizing how museums engage with their audiences online. I am so thrilled to have Jeremy Swick here to share his insights into the intersection of history, technology, and entrepreneurship offering a blueprint for the innovation and empowerment in the digital age. Welcome, Jeremy. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. That might've been the greatest intro of all time. So thank you. Well, I, I mean it. I've been kind of studying in the background of what you're doing and, and I'm just so impressed. It's always fascinating to discover someone who has such a richness and I, I can't wait to share you with my audience. All right. So we always start off with a quote, your favorite quote or mantra, maybe a guiding motto. What would you say that is? So for me, and it's been this for quite a long time, it is trust the process by motivational speaker, Dr. Eric Thomas. He talks about it quite a bit, trusting the process. And I think on, on your peaks and valleys on your life journey, it's really one of those things that you have to stay the course. It's easy to give up. It's easy to give in when times are tough or when things really do hit the fan, but rather it's trusting the process, knowing that you have your blueprint or your goal in mind and finding a way to overcome and achieve what you set out to do and not being afraid to pivot when the opportunity arises. If it, it's not meant to, it never is really exactly how we plan it. Wow. Isn't that the truth? And I'm curious as we go forward with this, if that's especially knowing that that is one, trusting the process and going with this flow, how did this merge into you finding this specialization? Like what led you to this depth of specialization that you now have? I all say, thankfully, I think it was pure ignorance. Uh, I wasn't a great student growing up, but I really did love gym class and I loved history class. I was that uh, 2.1, 2.2 GPA student in high school. I got into college on academic, excuse me, on academic probation, but I really did love history. And, you know, I'd read the whole book in a, in a class, but not actually do the homework. A lot of that maybe was maturity or growing up or just not really in my brain knowing that I already understood the information. So why was I being tested on it? And we, we can go into the whole subject of school later, but it was one of those things where I just kept taking history classes once I got to college. And for me, I had never seen myself as a student. I had never really seen myself as an academic achiever. And I remember I was sitting in a large lecture hall it was a Friday morning. We had just got exams back and I figured I had done all right, but uh, maybe I went out allegedly the night before, 
But, uh, you know, I'm sitting in class kind of thinking our professor gets on, gets in front and she's talking about the exam, how everyone did pretty well. And I'm like, all right, cool. I know I, I didn't do terrible. I've always liked history. And then she says, someone got 100% on this exam. It was, you know, a very large exam, many multiple choice questions. And in my brain, I'm like, who, who studied all night? I know I didn't. I just, you know, looked, always looked at history as like a story. Of course, that person in that giant lecture hall was me. Uh, you know, I got 100% on an exam and I realized it was like the first moment it really clicked that, all right, I am pretty good at this history thing. Maybe I should keep sticking with it and ended up doing that, ended up pursuing not only an undergrad, but ended up earning a master's in public history to, to do museum work. And one of the best pieces of advice my professor ever gave me in grad school was if you're writing a thesis, it's going to be, you know, over 100 pages. It better be something that you love to see every single day on good days, bad days, but you're still thankful you have it. I ended up writing my thesis on college football stadiums in the 1920s, looking at three different memorial stadiums at Minnesota, Illinois, and Indiana. My undergrad research was in early American rugby, and I just kept parlaying things I just accidentally liked to do, again, ignorance, into eventually a career that ended up going to the Pro Football and the College Football Hall of Fames. So I'm almost, I mean, there's so much to process with that, Jeremy. I know this, like, I am in awe and there's, I, I do want to touch on the education point because here's the thing. There are so many lost souls in our failed education system, which is not education. What you did was actually discover and follow your truth. And everything you just said was the most beautiful journey of following these subtle nuances of your joy, your bliss, your, right? I mean, we could definitely unpack that more, but wow, if someone could just listen to that piece right there and watch that evolution of your, from school and what happened and what progressed, I think it would take so much pressure off of a lot of us who think we have to get everything right and expectations and all of this. And then here you go and you get that 100% on a test that we're all like freaking out about, you know, and this, we, our mindsets are so confused. It's, it's why I love having guests like you on that share your stories and these personal pivotal moments that, and they're not just moments, clearly there's a stringing together of things. Is there a crucial early mistake that you would say uh, along that journey or a major pitfall that was a catalyst for some something else going on where you're at now? What I would say is as I developed in the entrepreneurial spirit, or excuse me, in entrepreneurship, but also when I went to the Pro Football Hall, excuse me, the College Football Hall of Fame, it was what I always call a near mistake. It would have been the biggest mistake of my life if I wouldn't have gone through with it. And I remember after a, several months of interviewing, I remember I was interviewing inside a parking lot because I was at a random museum getting more experience at up in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And I remember just kind of all the trials and tribulations, moving home, moving to a place for a few months for another museum opportunity, moving on different states, doing all that. I remember being the night before my interview in person at the College Football Hall of Fame down in Atlanta, Georgia. I had kind of come to the reality where I might actually get this position. I might actually become the historian and curator, something that I couldn't have even dreamed of. I'd already been an intern at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so uh, knocked that off the imaginary bucket list. But I realized right then and there, I had to be myself no matter what. I was about to move across the country. I didn't know anyone. And I remember going into that exec office with all the executives. They all ended up being pretty great. And I remember introducing myself. Hey, my name is Jeremy Swick. I love cheering on the Green Bay Packers, playing rugby, and drinking craft beer. And this is how I think I can help your museum grow. And I learned later that that's what sold them almost instantly on that moment because that's not a usual 
example you bring, you don't talk about you going out to love loving breweries or playing rugby or cheering on the Packers. And I just realized I had to be comfortable in who I was. And, you know, since then it's been off to the races when I work with new clients for potentially working together on podcasts or producing their podcasts. I'm just like, I'm going to be who I am. If you guys, if you like it, that's great. And if not, that's all right too. Maybe I can help you find something who's someone who's more suited to your needs or your particular outlook, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think we need more of this, what you just said, being your genuine self, being not only each of us being more connected to ourselves, because when we do that, we are able to connect more easily. I think, I know for me, when I have had, a position where I've needed to hire and bring someone in and we're, we're aboard and we have that, there is a shift that happens when someone shows up without this facade or without this kind of agenda machine that's running them. And so that is really a significant nugget and insight. Thank you. Uh, what do you say would be now that you've I mean, you're still very young, but you are a leader. You are definitely a leader in your own right. You're moving forward. What would you say to other up and coming leaders, leaders that are, you know, entrepreneur, it's a hard, <laughs> it's a hard path sometimes being an entrepreneur. You are a leader of multiple areas, right? But what would you say is an advice that you would share to leaders to lead stronger, longer? For me, I think the biggest piece of advice I would give is remembering that you got that, that you got it, that you are in that room or you're in that space for a reason. It's not accidental. You've earned where you're at. And I always tell people it's crazy. I've been asked before, like you've met a ton of athletes at this point. Yes. And, you know, the first time it was kind of a little kid butterfly effect. I felt it, you know, in the pit of my stomach, being a sports fan my whole life. And I was fortunate to meet some Green Bay Packers being from Wisconsin. Now I work with some of them on their podcasts, Amon Green and Dorsey Levins and Gilbert Brown. And I still get a little bit in my, the, my, my 90s Packers feel. But I always tell people to remember that they belong in the rooms they're in. They didn't get there by accident. And to really embrace that that uh, you don't need to be fearful of it. You can find ways to maneuver. And I know people say imposter syndrome, but a lot of that I feel is like lack of self-confidence. So just finding ways to believe in yourself and even celebrating those small little wins. You you maybe, maybe you didn't get your dream internship. Maybe you got your second best internship. Maybe you didn't get the dream client. You got another client. But just stacking those wins, making a a trajectory or trail of success, I think really helps for you to look back on, 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 you know, for me, sometimes I don't look back at as at what I've achieved all the time. Sometimes it feels like I need to go to the next thing. So it's also a reminder of myself to make sure you uh, celebrate where you're at sometimes. So, so good. This is, this is exactly what I would say to my, my clients is like, this is exactly it. I'm so happy to hear this. And it goes right back to your first mantra trust the process. So we're coming full circle. You're living, breathing, totally walking your talk. And I love that. I think that subtleness yet profound impact that comes from this being you and showing up that way is we something, of course, we need to see more of. But when, when you do that, if I could just, I, I want my sons to watch this because I want them to realize these false ideas that we present on ourselves and just just allowing to discover. I can't even imagine what would have happened had you not chosen or done like, no, I'm going to do history. I'm gonna, I like this and discovering for yourself what you truly love. I wish that we could have more people on in this world that are following that, right? Those delicious moments of, of joy that are what our breath, that's our breath. It yeah. really is. I appreciate you said that. And one of the things I always like to say with this too is this is not an overnight thing. This is not how I woke up. I guess this is how I woke up today, but it was a a long process. And it, it's still there. There's still days I don't believe myself. There's days I'm like, am I really doing the right thing? Why did I leave the College of Hall of Fame? I rarely get that anymore. But there are days, you know, you wake up and you're like, I moved back to a different museum and all that. But 
I kind of always have to remind myself that each each thing happened for for a reason, whether I got it or not. A lot of times you do see the final product. So what we're seeing today, or I, I shouldn't say the final product, but the current product. Uh, I often tell my clients what podcast thing, why does they ask me maybe why does mine come out clean? Why are there no filler words? I'm like, well, you see in between undergrad and grad school, I went into education. I learned how to teach. I was a teacher. And if you can get up in front of a group of middle schoolers, you can literally talk to anyone all the time. So by the time I was fortunate enough to be on ESPN and go on CNN and do sports and do all that at the college football hall of fame, all those little ums and uhs and pauses and filler words had kind of been beaten out of me already at that point because I didn't want to mess up in front of students. So it's one of those things I, I tell people that the people you see on TV or the people that you're interviewing or the, the clients I have, the people they're interviewing, you're going to start to notice and pick up things as you go, as you get better in your craft. It doesn't happen overnight but over time, you really start to see that success. And sometimes I look back and laugh at some of my early interviews. And, you know, the first time I did live TV or sometimes I know I still come up with filler words that are from Wisconsin. Like, oh, you betcha. And don't you know? And if I get too far into it, I'll slip back into uh, my Wisconsin dialect. But it's one of those things, you know, it just it takes time. And it's, again, as we mentioned, part of the process, trusting the process. A hundred percent. It's your it's very endearing actually you're <laughs> wisconsin don't you know i thought that was from a little further north but i love it it's very endearing again i am curious what your go-to book is i love that you mentioned that it is called uou by dr eric thomas phd and it really talks about dr eric thomas's life story he's a motivational speaker he went from homeless to near a household name, uh, becoming a, you know, six figure, seven figure speaker. And someone I first met coming up as there were dark times in that journey, in that process, a lot of times, especially on social media, you only see literally the highlight reels of life going on. Sometimes I, I wish I would have taken pictures of me sitting in a parking lot doing an interview or me driving up in a blizzard for a job I was overqualified for in Minnesota and, you know, driving back to Wisconsin, knowing I was going to get the job that was only for 15 months. It was, uh, I was eligible for food stamps while I was working full time. It was one of those things that I knew I did not want it, but I knew I needed it for that next step, that next pillar. And I was fortunate enough to find his motivational, quotes and sayings and he did a thank god it's monday on youtube and definitely recommend looking it up but it was one of those things i kept telling myself i'm, I'm gonna get through this i'm gonna trust the process and one of my first weeks in atlanta i was fortunate enough to meet him uh you know take a picture and you know shake his hand and that was one of the few pictures of what the people i've met in my life was for me of course i shared with people uh but it was one of those things that kind of got me to that next level and help me level up. I tell people again, to enjoy your time or your process and it might not be the easiest in the moment, but I even got better now about taking pictures when I meet athletes. And it's not really for me, it's for my friends and family, because I know a lot of people were part of this journey and this process that can't come with me to everything that don't didn't move to with me to Atlanta, not because I didn't want to, because it was just physically impossible to bring all your friends to Atlanta or the Pro Football Hall of Fame, or driving up to Camp Randall and helping Joe Thomas, one of my favorite linemen, with his induction ceremony. And it's one of those things I try to take more pictures now just to share with other people and not to be not to be like, hey, this is, look what I'm doing, but more like, look what we have done. And it's just one of those things that have become more and more powerful for me as, you know, as I've continued on my journey. Oh, that's a really beautiful concept. I hadn't looked at social media that way before. Thank you for that. And I get that sharing for others, because that's true. A lot of people in our world do get something from being able to observe. And it's not just them looking at the lens, but the way you just communicated that. I do feel like, yes, you're right. We are sharing that. That's beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to keep that in my mind when I when I hesitate, I'm like, no, I, you know, no, there's, there is a reason for this. And I think that that's one of the reasons that I really love doing um, these podcasts, because 
I get to meet people like you and I learn so much. And I know you help so many create their podcasts. Yes, you do it at a high level with the museums and the athletes, but you also do it for and with the business owners. And I would love it if you would share with us a little bit about what you're really focused on right now, the best way folks can contact you, uh, anything you care to sh share on how we can uh, reach out to you and people can work with you. And then we'll say goodbye. I really appreciate it. It's one of those things, as you mentioned with your podcast, I also have a podcast of my own called Into the Unknown with Jeremy Swick. And for me, it was partially to learn when I was editing these podcasts, I kind of wanted to get into the nitty gritty, how to edit. And of course, teach myself as I went along, eventually got to the point where I wanted to do it myself. And for me, again, it was one of those experiences and opportunities to really give flowers, give roses when I could. I've had some of my favorite NFL players on all the way to my seventh grade social studies teacher, who was one of the people who facilitated my love for history. And to have that experience, I mean, don't get me wrong, the NFL guys, the Olympic guys, they've been amazing. It's great. It's really cool. But episodes like my teacher or people who've helped me along the journey is really one of those things that will all stand out and stick out with me. In reference to who I work with, my goal at Swick Media, I don't even know if we talked about the company yet, but Swick Media, our goal is to take you from idea to episode and really making podcasting not scary a done-for-you podcast service. Of course, we'll sit down with you for the first hour or two and really help you map out, create some episodes, and really gauge what you want to do with your episodes or what you envision your show looking like. And, of course, then we'll walk you through how to do it. We'll set it all up, but we'll also explain how and why we're setting it up this way. This The goal is to, of course, help you create and continue on your journey. You don't want to be that podcast that makes one episode. Uh, instead, we try to make it as easy for you to continue making episodes and really just taking the fear out of it. We can go all the way up to you sit there and you record. If you have a studio, if you go to a studio or you have your laptop, we'll give you or tell you what you should purchase. And within reason, you don't need the top of the line things, but you also might want something a little better just so people like your editors make sure they have good quality to work with. So you have a successful podcast. Okay. You can find me at swickmedia.com. Send me an email, jswick at swickmedia.com. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff at The Average Historian. I, I reply pretty quickly on there. And uh, LinkedIn, just type in Jeremy Swick. Um, really anywhere. If you want to Google me, I hope I pop up. I, I do my best to stay on top. So Jeremy Swick on Google, that usually brings up uh, something of mine, I hope. That's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to continuing to connect with you and collaborate on what we've been doing in terms of bringing this all together, finding this whole path and trusting that process is so good. My number one takeaway is that in being able to see this 50,000 foot view that you've shared with us and being able to trust the process, it's one of the things that I was very not, I was not able to do that. I had to control every step of the way. So that's my number one takeaway is yes, trust the process and look at what happens. Thank you so much for being a guest on Lead Stronger Longer. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you next time, everyone.